Now, Rock Talk with Mitch LaFon. We are speaking with the Electric Boys, uh, Connie Bloom. The band has just signed a new deal with Mighty Music out of uh, Denmark. Uh, bonjour, as we say here in Montreal, Connie. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good, good. It's been a while. Yeah, I love I love doing these uh, with you. We always end up talking about the importance of Kiss and Ginger Wildheart and all that wonderful stuff. But uh, let us uh, let us get into this new deal. So the band put out an album a couple of years ago called The Ghost Ward Diaries. In fact, in yeah. 2018. Yeah, so a couple of years from now. Um, talk about this this new deal with Mighty Music, and what does that mean in terms of new music from the band? Are we looking at a one-off? Are we looking at three albums? Are we looking at four albums? Um, what does the future hold for the band? Well, first of all, like uh, the last album that we did was a distribution deal uh, through through them, and um, and this is more like a like a standard record deal. I didn't even know they they existed anymore, but apparently they do, <laughs> and we got one. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I think it's um, I can't remember now. I think it's one one. Uh, they have like an option for for two, one or two albums if if we all, you know, and agree on what we do together. But I'm sure we do. We we've had a great great relationship so far. So. And um, yeah, so we've been. Uh, writing and recording the new album which is going to be a bit more uh be, a bit more roots here i think in some way uh, the, the last one we did was quite it was uh quite uh produced and worked out and um uh, a bit too expensive for us to be honest <laughs> but um well, hey that's the way it goes yeah so it goes but um well, I don't know. Um, as but, always, it's really it's always exciting to, to write and record new stuff. But that's, that's the whole point of doing it, really. Right. So I'm not very nostalgic, so it's always about moving on and writing new stuff. So, so talk to me about that, because the band does have a very organic sound, very pure rock and roll. Uh, the last one you said is overproduced. Is it? Is it that what you want to get back to? Sort of more of a, I guess, a Rolling Stones kind of approach, where it's just. Let's get the drums, bass, guitar, and let's let's not play around with Pro Tools. Let's just make it organic. Yeah, and I didn't say the other one was overproduced, if that's what you said. But I, I just I just felt it was like very produced. We spent a lot of times tweaking stuff, and because we wanted it that way. But but that that's one way of doing it. But but it's always nice to 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 move in between. I mean, it's us. I find usually if you do something like that, then you usually want to go completely the opposite next time and then next time you do something completely opposite to that because it just makes it feel exciting for your for yourself so to speak right but yeah i uh that was a good that was a good um explanation actually what you, what you said i mean if you look at a band like if we were aerosmith now for instance and, and if the last one was like uh, the, the the latest albums this one would be going back to rocks <laughs> oh, well, I like. see. That's what we like. We like yeah. some rocks, yeah. <laughs> or some like toys the in the idea. attic. I like um, the idea of capturing, if it's possible. I like the idea of, idea of capturing the band yeah. as live as possible. Yeah, with over, of course. But but I mean, at least to get the 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 bell track, the the basics down. Like, well, let me ask you then. In terms of of recording it, would you consider? recording it live off the floor where you're in there with the drummer and the bass player and you just lay the tracks down very live rather than you go do your drum tracks tomorrow i'll go do my guitar tracks on wednesday you like do you want to just get in there all the guys and just say let's play let's hit record and let's see what we got yeah but that's that's how we how we have always done it to right. be to be honest okay. we've always been in the room at the same time um, when the drum, when we put the drums down, then things might change. But for most, I think this whole album, I think uh, all all the guitars that are all the like the two rhythm guitars have, are not being changed. Then we might add. There's even solos on the on the um, on the the drum track as well. So we well we we'll try to keep it as simple as possible. 
Now, the other exciting news for for fans of the band is that Martin Slim Tomander, the guitarist on Free Wheeling, is back. Uh, talk to me about having him back. What does he bring to the band? And let's discuss a little bit about what happened. I mean, when you when he left, there was different opinions, different things. It was, of course, a different time. It was 25 years ago. Did you work all that stuff out? And, and is it sort of like, Ugh, it's 25 years ago, enough's enough. And now we're just back and back to making music? Well, it wasn't 25 years, because you have to remember that we had a gap for, what, 15 years or so, even right. more. Right, right. So, <clears throat> um, it was not very, it wasn't very complicated at all. We just, uh, he had some ideas about how we wanted to do things, and which was a lot of things that we, the the rest of the band didn't uh, agree on, and so we just we decided together that maybe we should just go on and do it that way, and and you do whatever the other ideas that that you're having. So it it was all very very cool, and and with Martin, it um, well the different players to begin with, but I always had a a really good. Um, a good chemistry guitar wise with Martin and, and and as a matter of fact when I was doing the solo stuff I by purpose I, I haven't had an extra guitar player because I wanted just keyboards to have more space for the guitar but but then at some point I, I still when I, when I started thinking about Martin I saw him somewhere play and I thought well shit we should play together again so I brought him along to do some of the solo stuff <clears throat> and um well, it's it's family, you know. We 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 played together for a couple of years when we did free wheel, and so it's it's like it's like when we joined forces again with Nicholas and Franco after that long long pause. <laughs> um, it took twenty minutes, and then things was the same again. So, well, it's how- weird. Even even though so much has happened, and people get families and friends have died or whatever it is, uh, things that happen in life, but still it's like not much has changed, you know. It's probably like that for everyone if you if you hook up with some some people from from school or from when you were young. It's like everyone has their identity back then and it, it follows them for the rest of the life. Yeah, and, well, talk to me a little bit about the the band coming back together. Of course, you know you did, uh, and them boys done swing in 2011. But uh, the big one for me was Starlight, uh, Starflight, I should say, United in uh, 2014. An absolute phenomenal album. If you're a rock fan, and you haven't checked it out. Go now. It's really great. But how has the band been feeling getting back together, getting back to doing shows, getting back to recording music? I mean, is it really just a sense of family, or, or was there a sense of why did we stop? Like, what, why, you know, how did it feel, and how is it feeling now, five, six years later, with everybody playing? Um, you mean like, like this many years after the reunion? You mean? Yeah, I mean, is it still, is it still a great sense of we're a team and we're together? It, does a, yeah. does the business start creeping in again and you go, oh, okay, here we are, same problems? Or, you know, now that you're older, do you look back and go, you know what? It's a lot easier. We know how to deal with things. We know how to deal with promoters. We know how to deal with different situations. We're not going to have the same silly fights. Is it just a better band right now in terms of chemistry? I think the chemistry was always there, but, right. but the thing you mentioned about the the industry and all the all the little BS <laughs> that you that can annoy you and that can turn into something really big or, or used to turn into something really big is nowadays. Of course you can look at it now and think, oh what the fuck, it doesn't matter. I mean it's like there's more important things in life to worry about than you know, a certain sound once in a while or whatever. So in that sense I, I maybe it's easier nowadays. You try, you try to avoid the little stupid mistakes that you did back then. <laughs> I'm yeah. not saying we don't make mistakes, but you, you, at least we try not to make the same mistakes. Well, I think I think you might, even if you make the same mistakes, I think it's how you react to them. You know, when you're younger, everything is everything is the end of the world. And when you're older, you just go, eh, 
you know what, let's, let's just do something different tomorrow, whatever, you know, you, you know, when you're 20, everything is like, oh, what the hell, anyway, um, let me get over to a Game Set Bloom, the uh, solo album you put out earlier this year, recorded entirely in Swedish, talk to me about that decision, because in a sense, a lot of English speakers, a lot of Canadians, Americans, uh, Australians, they might go, well, it's Swedish, I'm not going to listen, uh, of course, the music is still great. Well, why why the Swedish? What was it? Just like, hey, I'm Swedish. I'm gonna make an album for my for my for my people, for my country, for for me. Well, I I suppose for me, it's um, well, being Swedish, it's it's not a big thing. But I, I was doing some other interview with with someone who said uh, in in America said that uh, how. How do you even know when to speak English and Swedish? And but it's all it all comes very natural, of course. But well, for me, I mean, uh, there's a lot of music, uh, rock music, pop music, and all, all kinds of music in Sweden that is sung in Swedish. So uh, I've grown up with that. But I was never much. I was into the folk music and um, people like Cornelis Resvik, uh, which uh, who had great lyrics and stuff but uh from a rock and roll point of view i always thought that uh it came it it came from the blues it came from america and all the great bands from from uk and everything was sung in english and so to me the sound of rock and roll was always english but then uh when i did my first solo album in swedish it, it was just a matter of uh, i just thought that what what would happen if i did an album in Swedish because it would certainly sound different and it would be it would feel uh, you know maybe fun and different and exciting to me to do something else and and I I just really liked it so I did that album and then I did this follow up Games of Bloom a couple of years after and um, so the way I look at it it's like I have that Swedish you know thing going on with my solo stuff. In your solo like song. Let, let me ask you just real quick about, about the language thing, because here in Quebec, a lot of artists will start off singing in French, especially, for example, Céline Dion. She did many years of just French only, French only, French only. And then she switched to English. And of course, the rest is history. She's a major star. She has the Vegas residencies, the whole thing. Is that sort of the same discussion that goes in into uh, bands in Sweden where you look at mustache and eclipse and ABBA and, and you go, yeah, you know what? We can swing, sing in Swedish and be a Swedish band, or we have to learn English and be a an international band. Is that sort of part of the discussion of well, if we want to be a big star, we got to sing in English? I can only speak for myself, but I'm sure a lot of people think like that if they that, that they want to make it international internationally, so you have to sing in English. Um, I don't know. I, I just, I, I just did it because it, it was diff, felt diff, it was different for me, and and it turned out really good. So, but who knows? Maybe the next one. We're, we've even, I've even talked about uh, doing an instrumental album. So then we won't even have this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. If you do an instrumental album, uh, real quick, uh, what kind of instrumental album do you think you would start doing? More of a Sort of a, a a a Michael Schenker, Uli John Roth kind of thing, or would you be going more Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, Ingve Malmsteen? Like, a, do you go sort of a melodic blues kind of thing, or do you just go bumblebee and just we all over the place? What, what what would be the approach on an instrumental for you? I'm not a I'm not a bumblebee guitar player to begin <laughs> with. So right. no, it would be. Um... I would say I don't. It's difficult, difficult to describe. I'd say it, it, it would probably be more connected to like the the albums that Jeff Beck did in the seventies, like Wired, Blow by Blow, that that kind of stuff. Maybe that's a great. Story. I mean, I have some. I have some stuff already that I've done, which I think is a little bit in that direction. But I'm not saying I'm. I do it like that, but it, but just to compare it to something. And if you remember that that track with Tommy Bowling, um, mm. what's it called now? 
Or jazz fusion or whatever. Um, real quick, uh, the band has released uh, Gone, 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 an EP in 2019, and The Lion's Roar. Um, talk to me about putting out a couple of just uh, singles or EPs rather than a full album in the last couple of years. Is that just, we have these great songs, let's get them out? Is that a new sort of marketing ploy? Let's, hey, let's give a, the, the fans a couple of songs every few months. Uh, talk to me about that, and, and is that something you want to continue, and do these songs end up on the new album? I think that might have been Sven's idea, our manager, um, because um, Record Store Day was coming up, so we, we started talking about if we should release something for Record Store Day, and we had uh, we had we had that song Lions Roar by by First Aid Kit um, recorded. We we did that when we did Ghost War Diaries, and we we kept it because we knew that there's gonna be some point where we need some some other track, so we we saved it for that, and then and then I had a de- a that. DAT, whatever that uh, cassette lying around from Abbey Road uh, when we did a cover of uh, uh, Life's Been Good, uh, your Walsh tune. So I was looking around for ages and I then I found it eventually. So we, uh, that's how that ended up there as well. It's, it's, it's very much like a, a thing for the fans, really. I mean, I think it, it was just. 300 copies or something like that right and and you don't hear the word uh, digital audio tape uh, very often anymore in 2020 no, good old dads oh my god it's funny i have a, a friend who's in radio who's only 26 years old and i said oh dads I, literally like two weeks ago we were talking about different more and i said dads and he looked at me and he went he goes what's that i go digital audio tape he goes Dig- what's that he couldn't he couldn't understand the concept so that that shows our age uh in terms of touring you know normally my we're even talking about fax machines and yeah fa- fax machines and all that great stuff uh, dial up remember dialing up for for your internet oh my god um but uh just real quick normally i, I ask you say hey coming over to, to the states and touring and yet now of course with the pandemic that's not even a discussion you can't but what is the situation for you in terms of touring i know there's been a lot of uh, talk in the media about how Sweden did herd immunity and they didn't lock down everything. I, is it sort of back to normal for you? Has it has it been normal this entire year? And you watch the rest of the world going, what are they talking about lockdowns? How is sort of the the live situation for Electric Boys and and furthermore in Sweden right now? First of all, there's been a few photos uh, flying around on the net on, on people going crazy in, in bars and stuff like that. And and I I gotta say that's not the, the whole truth. I mean like I was I was in town today and uh, I mean I think a lot of people are are really careful, you know, about all the washing your hands and there's a lot of masks around even though we don't have to use them but People keep a distance, and if elderly people come, you you step aside, you know, to let them pass. And so, uh, I don't think it's been as as crazy as it as it looks appears sometimes. Um, and I think I don't know. I'm I'm just a guitar player, but I think the herd immunity thing. If you look back at how, how viruses and and it's normal flus has been um, going every year, then. Um, I don't know if you can actually shout it out because if you if you do like a lockdown, and then it's it's not like it's gonna go away. It, it it's, it's it'll be gone right there at that time. But then if if just one or two people come visit that place who's got the virus, and it's gonna start spreading again, maybe. So I can understand the the discussion about the what's it called herd immunity. Is that what we say in English? Yeah, that's how you call it. But but are things back to normal? Here in Quebec, we can have shows with 250 people. That's it. So, so we, only, we only have 50. You only have 50. Okay, so so that's, that's the situation. So arena shows and stadium shows, that's not happening. There's no Sweden rock for... Okay. Oh, well, 
Well, it's only 50. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious as to why Quebec is at 250 and the rest of the world is at zero or 50. It's interesting. So, but you've been able to play then. We're talking about, we're talking about changing it. Uh, it hasn't been done, but, but there's been talk about it. And it might go up to 500 when, when that happens. I don't know. <clears throat> but, um, well, it is, as we all know, it's, it is really difficult times. I've, I've been, I, I feel really lucky and blessed, actually, because I've done a lot of shows this summer um, because there was a company that started this uh, Trägods live, it, it, it translates to like garden, garden live right. or something like that. So it's it's like the live streaming. Yeah, pri- no, it's a uh, it's private people that that can buy a show in their own garden, so to speak. Gotcha, like that. Right, that's kind of so cool. They, and and they invite people and they buy tickets and with with a fifty limit. So and because that doesn't make enough money to travel around with a whole band but i've done some solo shows like that and i've done it with a um, with a drummer because i got like a special a custom-made guitar which is a stereo guitar so it it, it works like uh, so it's like a it sounds like a guitar but a bass like a bass player at the same time so we've done some fun stuff so it's been it's been a musical summer for me anyway plus the, we wrote i wrote all the songs and we recorded the album so it it's been all right anyway or even though it even though it sucks <laughs> it does now now the uh, the title of the album from what i saw was ups the down ups and down uh, or upside down i guess with an exclamation okay. point uh is that still the the going title or is that sort of the working title well it, it is the working title and the going title for for the moment unless yeah well, um, i think that's going to be the title. We have yeah. a, an idea for a cover for it, so I think I think we could stay to that. That's great, and uh, we'll end on this. We normally talk about Kiss, but I want to go back to uh, 1989, 1990. You're on the Funk O Metal Carpet Ride, and you tour opening for Thunder. Yes, my, my one of my, in fact, my favorite Euro- European band. I would think. Um, talk to me They're a little both. bit about. Danny Bowes can sing anything, yeah. and I'll buy it. I mean, that's that's just quickly for 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 the fan perspective and me. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that tour. You know, you're 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 getting out of Sweden. You're getting over into Europe and into the UK. You've got Thunder, two bands that are sort of trying to prove themselves. Um, just look at a few memories of that tour, and and what did you sort of learn from it in terms of how to organize a tour, how to get on the road, and and uh, just uh, some experiences of being with with Luke and uh, Danny on the road. Yeah. Well, first of all, it was a it was a really good tour because they had already made it in UK. They they were a famous band, and and we were on the. Um, there was a, a big hype about us, so it was a good combination. And of course, they were great guys, and we were hanging out and watched their shows. And Danny was singing his ass off. Uh, but one thing I remember is speaking of him being such a great singer, because I I always look I, I've always been a guitar player who sing, not not the opposite. So and I said to him like at one after party, this is many years later. I said to him, are you, are you one of those guys who wake up in the morning and just go, <clears throat> and then you sound like that? And he said, no, Connie, listen, I gotta tell you, being a singer is a mind fuck. <laughs> And it was really nice for me to hear that. He says the whole day, I keep I keep thinking about how I talk, I keep breathing, I do this and that, and just to to you know take care of my voice. So I was like, okay. That, at least that's a, a bit confident. <laughs> well, but, hope, um, hopefully someday is, you and hopefully you you and Danny someday can do some kind of duet on on one of your each other's albums or, or a special single, because I'd be so down for that. But, uh, yeah, go on. What were you going to say? What's that? Uh, were you going to add something to that? To the, to that or? If I'd love to do something with him, of course. That'd be great. If that's what you... Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, I'm down for that. Uh, anyway, uh, of course, uh, Upside Down will come out in 2021. <clears throat> Uh, Connie, always, always a pleasure. And as we say in Montreal, merci beaucoup.
Merci beaucoup. I understand. I can't speak French. I did for a little while, but then then the teacher said, "Listen, you know, this is not going really good. You should you should uh, go for the what was the other one in Eng in English? Go for the English. I was, I was I was good at music and at drawing. So the other one was like uh, the the arts. It was like some kind of art thing. Right. So Language so you arts. Should, you should do that instead. I'm like, okay, I hear you. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> I understand. Thank you, sir. We'll uh, we'll do this again soon, and and uh, looking forward to the new album. The last few have been well. In fact, all of them have been really great. You've been very consistent in your catalog. I have to say, over the years, just just straight ahead, right. fun yeah. rock and roll. We, we try. We try. You, well, you're, you're you're succeeding. Cheers. Merci. Right.